start with a learning check. First, what's the name for hemoglobin when it's carrying carbon dioxide? And second, how many oxygen, oxygen molecules can one single hemoglobin molecule carry? First one here is carbamino hemoglobin opposed to deoxy or oxyhemoglobin refer to its oxygen carrying status. We'll come back to look at each of those scenarios when we get to gas transport at the end of the respiratory system. And here, four, right? There's four subunits. Um, each can carry a molecule of oxygen. Okay, last thing about erythrocytes and red blood cells is going back to the idea of hematocrit. I talked about this when I first introduced red blood cells and that packing that they do as the pellet when you spin down whole blood. So this is what I'm referring to here. Um, when you spin down whole blood, you get these layers, right? These layers are our plasma, our white blood cell buffy coat, also platelets. Buffy coat is actually a better name, contains a lot of white blood cells and our erythrocytes or red blood cells at the bottom here, densely packed, heavier cells. So normally, if you do this in a healthy individual, you will get anywhere between these values in terms of the percent that this makes up relative to the rest, right? So let's just take 45% as an example here that, that falls in between both female and male ranges. 45% means these red blood cells are 45% of the entire whole blood, of our whole blood sample. And those ranges vary, about 10% variability that's normal in both males and females, um, but males do have a slightly higher hematocrit that is normal for them. Um, and then if you have anemia, so anemia member is the inability to carry as much oxygen due to um, low red blood cell level and therefore low hemoglobin levels, um, it's lower, right? So you're gonna have under these ranges. So you could estimate here, you know, about 20% in this case. Basically, you could be mildly anemic if you're anything under these ranges. Um, you may or may not be concerned about being just under that range. Then you've got um, polysthemia is high levels of hematocrit. And so this would be a higher percent than normal. So in this example here, I counted this up, it's six out of nine. So what that's a, over 60%, let's say 66% in this example is a high percent hematocrit. And you may think that's great, right? We want as many red blood cells as we can. That's what people take EPO for is to increase their hematocrit percent. But this high is a problem. So this can, can be a problem. So this can actually um, cause the blood vessels to be too, the, the stuff inside them is too viscous, too thick. Um, it can lead to blood clots, um, stroke, and put more pressure on the heart, more work on the heart, because blood pressure can increase. And this will make more sense when we get back to the components of blood that relate to blood pressure. So blood viscosity matters for um, maintaining blood pressure. So this is higher than healthy, than normal. Um, it's going to occur, for example, in, in Down syndrome, it can be one genetic component. So when you're taking EPO, which you shouldn't be, um, or you're going to high altitude, you're probably more likely increasing your hematocrit to the high end of your range. All right, I think that's it about hematocrit.